Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Hi, friends. We are back today with the book Living Spring. And today is a very beautiful message again through um, Emmanuel by the medium Chico Xavier. It is chapter 25 concerning Christ's gift. But grace has been given to each one of us according to the measures of the gift of Christ. And it's from Paul to the Ephesians, verse four, um, chapter 4, verse 7. Over these 20 centuries of Christianity, the human soul has been a consciousness enlightened by reason amidst a battle of inquiring illuminative personal qualities. The battlefield is to be found within our inner life. Animality, and I'm sorry, animality versus spirituality. I think I'm going to just stop here. Emmanuel is trying to tell us in this chapter that we have a battlefield that is found within our inner life. This is where we think. Where our soul is. This is where we can see our in our animal instincts as well as our spiritual instincts. And he says it is our animalistic um, instincts versus our spirituality. And there are many um, places that we can see that, especially in the spirit book as well. It is that we should know ourselves. It is very good to, to know our instincts, our thought process, especially our subconscious thought process. And that is why it's also very good for us to write down what we think, to have a book. And there was a very beautiful um, interview with um, Muhammad Gandhi's grandchild. And he explained beautiful what we can do, and that is a great example, what we can do to look at ourselves, to write down our thoughts, to see this inner war that we have with good animalistic, like Emmanuel is trying to tell us, and our spirituality. But let's see what Emmanuel is saying further. Millennia of deeper set darkness against the nascent light. And he's telling us that it is millennia that we are in this darkness of our animalistic tendencies. But it is, and it's against the necessity of light in us, our spirituality. He says, and human beings, between the alternative of life and death, being reborn in the physical body and returning to the spirit life little by little, shape the sublime inequalities that are essential for their spiritual accession and which in fact con continue it, the process of virtue of Christ in each one of us. <coughs> Excuse me. So what Emmanuel is telling us is that the excessive reincarnation is what helps us, and he says, to, to continue the progressive virtue of Christ in each one of us. So this is why it is good to know that God loves us so much that he gives us another John, another reincarnation to have the opportunity to work on our spirituality. And this is why this incarnation we shouldn't take for granted. We should use this incarnation when we awake in the morning we should say thank you for this incarnation. Thank you, Lord, thank you. So we have a new chance to work on ourselves and to be of service as well. That is why divine grace occupies human existence or growth within it. In so far has the in incipient, small, regular, or great gifts of Jesus are expressed in it. This is so beautiful. Wherever you may be or wherever you may Wherever, whoever you might be, seek to develop Christian qualities within you with the same watchful attention that is given to cultivate precious plants in the home. 
and he says that we should watch over ourselves, um, be watchful and attentive to our thoughts. And how can we do that, you may ask? It's to keep our, <clears throat> ourselves busy with everything that is good. In today's life, in this epidemic that we have, um, everything that's going on, if we choose to listen only to all the negative things, we wouldn't be able to, to see the spirituality, the Christian-like, the Christ-like um, things in the world. But if we choose, and this is a choice, to focus, like Emmanuel's also explaining in the book, Thought and Life, if we choose, chapter 10, to focus on the good, to mold the good, with all the resources, and this is always a reminder, over Goddard Radio, every host that I know has, has um, reminded us of this quote by Emmanuel. And if we focus on that, and that's what I also do with my granddaughter. It is to listen sometimes to people and tell them what could do we see. And in ourselves as well. When there's something that we have a problem with, focus it and say, what good do I see? Because there is so much good. There's so much blessings and there's so much grace around us that we should um, focus, rather focus on that. And then our faith in all the other things that God is working on. And then let's continue. As for us, we are um, susceptible to anger, good or evil, engender good or evil. Let us offer the vessel, vessel of our heart to the divine cultivator, bearing in mind that if the con unconscious soil of our spirit, except he seed, then each crumb of our good walls will most certainly become a miraculous channel for the um, extra, sorry, exteriorization of the good. So if we accept it and we have good walls, and good walls are a very important thing to have for all things, for all beings having good will. Emmanuel is telling us, then um, it will mu multiply the gifts of the Lord all around us. So he's telling us that we are the co-creators of the good. And this is a question we can ask ourselves today. What am I admitting? What do people get from me? Do they feel loved to the few assisted because this is what we have in ourselves what is in our cup is what flows over and if we are in a state of fear and if we are in a state of anger sometimes this is what we fill our cups with and this is the animalistic side of us but if we fill our cups with understanding with love with kindness with goodwill. This is what will spill over to everyone that we meet, to everything that we touch, with every thought that we have. Observe your good side. And again, Emmanuel is telling us, watch for your good side because there is good in all of us. There is our spirituality. There is God. Again, Emmanuel is reminding us, and I think it's in the book, The Way, The Truth, and The Light. Again, there are so many chapters that Emmanuel is reminding us of the seed of God in everything and in everybody. And remember, you're in, um, you can increase it infinitely. So it's up to us to increase our good side, our godly side, our spirituality side, our Christ-like side. For in, um, he says, infinitely, beyond our understanding. Do not try to destroy millennia of darkness all at once. 
And again, Emmanuel is reminding us to take it day by day, to forgive ourselves, to start a new day again over with thankfulness, with gratitude, and with our eyes focused on the good. Strive for self-improvement each and every day. <clears throat> and the question we can ask ourselves is, how can I be the best version of myself today? The best Christ-like version of myself today? Is it by mindful listening without judgment? There are so many things that we can use every day to focus our minds on so that we can focus on the good. And he says, preserve in learning from the master of love and selflessness. You know, we are so prone to, to say I, I, and I'm going through this, and I'm doing this, and I. But I is this Paul, or I'm trying to describe this correctly, that we hit our head against constantly, that we walk into because we are only focused on ourselves. But if we focus on everything around us, we can walk more freely. But if the I are there, we can't move. We are stuck with our heads against this I constantly. Let us not forget that divine grace will fill our personal space according to our real growth in the gift of God. And how beautiful that we are in the month of December, counting down the beautiful days until we celebrate the incarnation of Christ on earth. And it is an inspiration. Every day should be Christmas. Every day should be gratitude for the example that Jesus to all of us, and that the great spirits will always come to remind us through so many books. And it's so good for us to focus on that, especially the book, um, The Good News, that is already translated, but that we study on Sundays. It is good to, to be reminded of that, because the more that we hear all these good things, the more we can mirror this. Um, and practice to be more kind in the way we look at each other. If we see how the spirits describe Jesus' way of being, it is so amazing and it's good for us to, to focus on ourselves, to see the way that we talk, the way that we listen, the way that we think. And it's beautiful for us to practice all these beautiful things that a spirit gives us so freely. And this is the love of God that comes through spiritism. What Jesus has promised is the promised consoler. How blessed we are. Thank you so much for joining me. May everybody be blessed and be safe. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.